thejbeans.net. We sailed on the Carnival Venezia for five nights in August 2023. If you follow these 11 additional tips, you'll likely enjoy sailing on her as much as we did. Just a quick note that if you enjoy this video, please give us a thumbs up or leave a comment. It really helps our channel. And consider subscribing so you get alerted when we add new videos. Our first tip is to mark your cruise calendar for the Captain's Venetian Toast on Formal Night. During our cruise, the ship's atrium transformed with a distinct Venetian ambiance. A string trio, along with playlist production singers, serenaded us with opera tunes while dressed in Venetian outfits and masks. Adding to the festive atmosphere, many passengers also wore Venetian masks. The highlight of the event was when the Venezia's cruise director introduced the ship's senior officers, followed by the captain leading a champagne toast. After the toast, the string trio continued playing Venetian-themed music. Be sure to arrive a little early for the event so you can find a good viewing spot on deck 3, 4, or 5. Also make sure you bring your own Venetian mask or check the daily schedule for a mask-making activity to join in the fun. Our next tip is to take a detour to another deck if you're trying to access the Canal Grande restaurant on deck 3 aft from other parts of Deck 3. During our cruise, we noticed that the Venezia's galley was positioned between the Deck 3 midship and Deck 3 aft elevators, which prevented direct access from one to the other. That meant the only way passengers could access the Canal Grande restaurant was to go to a different deck, then take the aft elevators or stairs back to Deck 3. Speaking of detours, our third tip is to take a detour to another deck if you're navigating between Deck 11 Ford and Deck 11 Midship while using a wheelchair or other mobility assistance device. During our cruise, we noticed a small set of stairs that made the transition inaccessible for those with mobility assistance devices. Although the barrier could be inferred from the Venezia's accessible route, it wasn't very obvious and it was very important to know. Our next tip is to be aware that the restrooms for the Venezia's Marco Polo restaurant on Deck 3 midship are not located in an obvious spot. To access the restrooms, we had to exit through the restaurant's main entrance and then continue through the atrium along the port side or left side of the ship. After continuing past the Carnival Adventures excursion desk, we found the restrooms on our left. Speaking of the atrium area, our fifth tip is to consider a slight detour when boarding the Venezia at the atrium area on Deck 3 during embarkation. Instead of joining the queue of passengers at the forward elevators, we walk through the Marco Polo restaurant to access the midship elevators. During our cruise, we found the midship elevators were significantly less crowded. However, keep in mind that some of the elevators were being used for luggage delivery, which meant only a few were operational for passengers. Our next tip is to make sure you're aware of the seating options available in the Teatro Rosso Theater on decks 4 and 5 forward. A large portion of the Venezia's theater featured individual cushioned chairs with armrests and shared cup holders. A few freestanding chairs were available at the end of some rows, and the chairs could be easily moved to allow for companion seating. On Deck 5, the sides featured high back raised couches that included small tables. 
The middle area included some circular raised couches centered around a table. And the very back area had a few stool-type chairs with tables. It's worth noting that some seats had extremely obstructed views of the stage, including chairs that were located behind large columns and areas that had poor sight lines. Because of that, we recommend arriving a bit early to select a good seat. Our seventh tip is to visit the Java Blue Cafe on Deck 10 Midship of the Venezia. If you want an extra paper daily schedule, or if you want a fun daily challenge. During our cruise, the cafe had extra copies of the paper daily schedule, as well as a daily crossword, Sudoku, and cryptic available for passengers. If you're just looking for an extra paper daily schedule, we also found copies available at the Gondola Lounge on Deck 5 aft, and the Atrium Bar on Deck 3 Midship. Speaking of the Java Blue Cafe, our next tip is to head to the cafe on Deck 10 Midship if you're just interested in a pastry for breakfast. During our cruise, complimentary pastries were available near the cashier, and the cafe was often a more convenient spot to grab a quick bite compared to navigating the Venezia's busier buffet area. Our ninth tip is to head to Deck 12 if you want to watch the Venezia depart your embarkation port and experience the sail away party at the same time. During our cruise, the sail away party was held at the pool area on Deck 10 midship, but that spot didn't provide a great view of our ship leaving port. For the full experience, we climbed the stairs near the pool to Deck 11, walked indoors and passed the midship elevators, then turned right and walked up the stairs to the warehouse arcade on Deck 12. After passing through the arcade and exiting outside, we were able to find a great spot to enjoy the party atmosphere while watching our departure. Our next tip is to grab a glass from the Lido Marketplace Buffet's Pour Your Own Beer Stations if you want a more substantial, adult-sized drink. During our cruise, the plastic drink cups provided at the Venezia's buffet were surprisingly small, as if they were designed for children. So we opted for the larger, full-size glasses for our beverages. Our 11th and final tip is to use a few kid-friendly four-letter words to help you find your stateroom. Many people remember that port and left have four letters, and port is the left side of the ship when facing forward. Additionally, even has four letters, and the even numbered staterooms are on the port side or left side of the Venezia.